These are very famous panels. Everybody knows them if you've studied Egyptian art. They're in all the art books. But uh, in a way, I don't feel I've ever seen them until now because I've seen them without any glass. I've uh, studied them, and now we can see them in, bathed in this beautiful light. So I see them more clearly than I've ever seen them before. The mummy is lying here on his left side facing out. So this is where his head is. Everything in here is for his benefit. You have to understand that they, this coffin was sealed. There was another coffin inside of it. It was in a burial chamber at the bottom of a shaft. It was sealed. Nobody saw them like we're looking at them now. But the spirit of the deceased is in there. And everything is facing him and oriented towards him. So the beginning of all the inscriptions starts where his head is. And so that starts from the left. We have here a depiction, for instance, of the, the Elysian fields of the ancient Egyptians. So in one of the numerous conceptions of the afterlife, the afterlife is pictured as a blissful bucolic version of life here on Earth. So we have him plowing and reaping and eating and drinking and making love and basically doing everything that he wants in the afterlife, all happy and without any interference. And then after having described the world as he wants it to be, everything working out well and successfully for him, he enumerates a lot of his fears. He doesn't want his magic to be taken away by harmful animals. He doesn't want to eat feces or drink urine because these are backwards things, so he tells you he detests that. He doesn't want to stand upside down. He wants to be standing up in the afterlife. He doesn't want to lose his head. He has his head and his limbs in the afterlife. So we have uh, all of these possibilities, things that he wants to make sure do happen and things that he wants to make sure do not happen to him. There are spells that have been written inside of the joints where the sides fit together. You can see here the pegs and the copper wires that uh, lashed the uh, huge cedar boards together. And inside we have written speeches of various protective funerary deities. This one is of uh, Isis, the goddess Isis, who is uh, a goddess whose magic is particularly strong. And uh, she uh, says, Jed Medu, words spoken by Isis, D-N-E-N-E-K, I have given to you your head. And this is the most basic function of mummification and of the coffin, is to keep the body intact. You keep your head on and you keep your limbs bound closely to you and your bones knit together. These spells are knitting together the sides of the coffin as though it's symbolically your body, just as the spells also keep your limbs intact. And of course we need them intact because eventually the mummy will be freed from its wrappings and you will gain mobility in the afterlife and the ability to transform yourself into any shape or being that is necessary. These are the most beautiful hieroglyphs I, I know that I've ever seen. And more than any other hieroglyphs, they show the very close interconnection in ancient Egypt between painting and writing.